up here. Hello and welcome back. Uh, I'm up at the caravan and it's absolutely freezing. It's raining as per normal up at my caravan. Um, I've come to do uh, a few little jobs. Um, last time we went away, uh, we had a few folks that came up on the caravan um, that, that needed rectifying. One of them was nearly a, a major disaster, but we managed to uh, get to it in time. Uh, the first one that we noticed was the uh, hitch was making a lot of noise when we came up. Despite a few, about about five weeks ago, I uh, polished the tow bar up. Um, I think what has happened is over the time there's little bits of grit got onto the uh, the tow ball and inside the hitch and causing a little bit of problem. So what I've done is I've taken the Alco uh, friction pads out and I've got some wet and dry sandpaper and just sanded those down a little bit to smooth them off. So if you look at this close up of the uh, the alcohol friction pads you'll see there's a little bit of pitting within there. Uh, I have sanded them down, they are a lot smoother. Um, hopefully they, those will be better. Um, we're not going anywhere for a while so but uh, yeah hopefully that will do the trick and I'll probably replace those next year. Now we, the, the last trip we went on was uh, to Donkey Creek uh, and I'm not sure whether the vlog's gone out for that yet, possibly not, but um, we had set up in record time in about 20 minutes uh, and we'd put all the water in and we were just sitting down uh, just to have decide what we were going to do for tea and the pump kept coming on every, I'd say every 15 seconds ago or so, the pump would come on and then go off and this kind of, you know, baffled me a little bit because sometimes it does come on if there's a change in voltage in the pump but it was coming on going off just very short bursts of, of the pump coming on um we switched the pump off and thought oh it might settle down we'll see what happens uh, a little bit later we put the pump back on and it was doing it again so we just left it for a bit and um didn't think nothing of it thought it would go away and then i decided to investigate and I lifted the bench seat up, which I'll show you in a minute where the pump is. And there was one of the connections going to the pump that had failed and it was actually splurting water out. So there was water all underneath the where the pump is. Luckily, um, there was quite a bit of water. Well, it looked like quite a bit of water, but um, it's only gone on top of the lino and it's not soaked into any of the wood. We, we caught it quick enough uh, and we were able to clean it all up. I, I, I quickly lifted the other tap, drained, you know, dumped all the water out of the system. And um, what's actually gone is this fitting here. Again, I'll show you a, a close up of this fitting. You'll see that around the top, the beveled edge there, is um, is a join and the water was coming out from underneath there and if we look inside the fitting there's a black seal that you can see and I think it's that seal that's gone um, so that's what we're going to be replacing today um, I didn't get the same fitting um, because uh, you know we were supposed to be going away and I couldn't order one but I, I went up to Stuart Longton's and I've got an equal 12 milli T it was about four pound I think so this will do the trick and also I've just got a small section of pipe which I'm going to be needing. Now the key to doing this is having the right tools. Now I've got this, this pipe cutter here, this plastic pipe cutter that I use for doing plumbing bits and bobs at home. Uh, and that's the best way to cut the pipes. I've seen people cut them with scissors and cut them with hacksaws. But this, what this does, it enables you to give yourself a nice clean cut on the pipe. And, and it fits in nice and bonny. So I'll show you underneath and where the problem was. I'm actually going to take the pump out and, and show you how I'm going to fix this equal T and then I'll go back down to where the pump is and how we're going to put that back in. So hopefully you can see here where, uh, this is where the pump is. It's not in its right position because I, I had to kind of move it. What I did was take the surge damper out and then uh, bypass the surge damper in order to remove that part that we could stay for the weekend. Um, this bit at the end here is the filter, uh, that's obviously the pump. What I'm going to actually do is take the pump off and fit this the equal T onto the side of the pump first and then you can see what I'm doing and then we'll come back down here and put the pump back in. And all the water was just, just around here, just sat on top of the lino uh, all the way down to the front and just down towards near the, the Alder heating boiler there. So I had to mop all that up with, uh, with kitchen roll and uh, get rid of that water but no it's not gone 
luckily hadn't gone towards the uh, the edge of the van there, um, so it was fairly dry towards there, but we managed to mop it all up. Now the reason why I'm taking the pump out is because I need to get the gap here right, because the surge damper needs to fit at, the, uh, at this side here. So in order to get that spacing right, I kind of need to put the surge damper in position. So I did fit a new pump quite a while ago, and this is the, the old kind of holder for, for the surge damper. Uh, and I, I don't actually know what kind of you're supposed to have on this new pump, but this works and it seems to be working okay. Uh, obviously the, the uh, surge damper needs to be in upright position, and this needs to fit in this kind of position here. Now it's only a small section of pipe that I need in order to be able to fix this together, so this is why I want to do it outside of here. Another interesting thing that when I took the pump out, there was a, still quite a bit of water within the pump, so um, maybe I need to look at getting uh, you know some sort of drain down kit, but I've got a bit of a plan for that, which hopefully will be coming up in a future video. Um, but yeah, this is a section that I need to get right. So what I'm going to do first of all, these are all push fit, is I'm going to put the uh, surge damper into there, so it just pushes in, and then you can feel that it's it's on, it's steady. You know, it's not going anywhere. And I need to get this in the right position. So the surge damper is going to sit there. And it's only a very small piece of pipe that I'm going to need. So if I get the uh, the section of pipe, obviously it's going to go into the fitting quite a fair way. So that edge is, doesn't look very clean. So I'm going to cut that edge myself. So I'm just going to cut a small piece of the pipe off. That gives it a nice clean cut with the pipe, fit, uh, pipe tool there. And it needs to be roughly that far. So I've now cut the piece of pipe on both sides. The surge jumper is in place. Uh, and um, it, it was only a small section of pipe. What I'm going to do now is put this back into place and put the rest of the fittings on there and then the pump's ready to go. So I need to put the pump back into its place. Um, this is the main feed in from uh, obviously outside and that fits onto here, onto the filter like so. And then from this other side is where the feed goes to uh, the, the tap, obviously, uh, when we drain it, and, and then that goes into the boiler. And again, that's just a push fit. It's quite difficult to get to, and then it just slots into there, and that's a nice sturdy fit on there. So that's it all connected up. We just need to um, put these screws back down to secure it. I did put this rubber mat on to stop the vibration, and then plug the pump in. And that's just a simple connection which fits in like so. So I've got the electrical connection plugged back in there and all I need to do now is put these screws back down on the floor just to secure the pump to the floor. So hopefully that will do the trick and we won't have any more leaking water. Um, we probably won't know until we get away again whenever that might be. Uh, I'm going to put the friction pads back into the hitch. Um, I'm not going to show you that. I've done a video changing those. I'll put a link to that up here. So another quick job you can do yourself. Um, quite easy to do with the push fits. I said the, the best thing to use is that proper pipe cutting tool uh, to get a nice clean cut. Um, so that's us for this week. Thanks for watching. Take care and we'll see you soon. Bye bye.